Uh, okay. Uh, so today is, in fact, Tuesday, so I don't usually have Guild War or anything. And I was going to make a Fire Emblem video, but I think I'm going to push that back to Thursday. Um, but today, uh, I'm probably going to just do a summoning video. Um, just, I guess, put... It's going to be a really short one. Oh, crap. Uh, I think I'm going to summon a few times on the Cho. I think her name is Cho. On the Shu. Maybe, I think it's Shu. Might be Shu. On the uh, Shu banner. Uh, I do think she's gonna be pretty good. Uh, problematically, one of the one of the things I, I I think goes against her. And well, okay, I'll do the summons and stuff like that right now, and then um, I'll talk about Shoe afterwards. Because if you're gonna click on this video for the summons, you're probably just here for the summons. Uh, but if you want to see to the end and, and, and hear some thoughts, then, then we'll talk about her then. Uh, but I'm gonna do seven summons on her again. I'm still mulling over whether I want to pity her or not. Uh, but we'll see if we get her in seven summons. That'd be cool if we do. If not, then that's fine. I'm just doing the seven summons to get the. Um, the last gold transmit stone so we can do three ml summons and that's going to be the whole video uh so like i said kind of short um hopefully anyway i don't talk too long so let's get in here uh, my box is not my hero box is not empty right now so unfortunately this is all going straight, in, straight into my inventory one two uh three and four come to think of it uh, I probably should have included the um, 10 dailies for this, but I guess I just kind of pulled the trigger on that too quickly. Oh, but that's all right. Oh, let's see if we get her. It'd be pretty funny if we did. Oops, so we got a four star. I just need Angelicas to merge my um, Sinful Angelica. So take a look here where we're at. So here's the last one um, and nothing. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to mull over whether or not I want to summon, uh, kind of go all in. You can see here I don't have a lot of resources, 250 and uh, like 7,000 sky stones. Uh, so you want to, this is a this is a good time for those of you out there, this is a good time to be careful because I think, you know, most YouTubers are, are probably letting you know that it's like, it looks like there's a lot of interesting stuff on the horizon. I mean, tomorrow we're going to learn about uh, uh, ML Crow, which is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been thinking about summoning Corvus, but depending on how Crow is, uh, we'll, you know, see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so let's let's get our uh, let's get these summons out of the way. Uh, for one, okay, there's nothing here. Uh, for two, nothing here again. Uh, and then the last one. So let's go get these uh, redeem these gold transmit stones. Uh, usually. Um, you want to wait till after like a new ML comes out to like re redeem your gold trans or to, to do all these summons. But generally, I don't really you know I was just gonna summon all these as soon as I got them one at a time. But they all came kind of close, so I decided to just make a video, do three and, and and whatever summons I need for 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 Shu here. Um, yeah, so let's do this. Yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah. So this is how it goes. This is why I didn't really care too much um, whether I save them and summon them whether I summon them now or summon them later. I'm not gonna get anything out of them anyway. Um, so yeah, I think uh, it always it always feels to me like there's like it, it it it's felt to me like there's been like some sort of small shadow nerf to like the ML summoning because uh, as soon as we hit like as soon as we got the pity system for the uh, mystic summons, it's felt like a lot drier. But anyway, that's just me. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, three ML summons, two do uh, two of the same, and then um, always got to get the epic spin. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about uh, Shu, whether or not uh, you should get her or, or, you know, whether I'm going to get her um, and what, what reasons for or, or against that I have, uh, whether I might not get her or not. <clears throat> uh, fortunately, it doesn't look like um, she was too big a deal. Uh, Mui, I didn't summon for her, but um, I don't think she's bad, but she doesn't really bring a whole lot. She gives an attack buff and she stuns with this, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, she's kind of whatever. I didn't really think too much of her. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't pull on her. She, she doesn't seem to be, like, shaking up the meta or anything very interesting. But it usually takes time. I mean, she could be more, she could come out, uh, she could be a lot stronger as time goes on. Uh, it's just a, who knows, you know. Uh, so let's talk about her. Uh, she's got similar stats, I think, to, uh, to, what's her name? <sighs> Alencia, right? So I think me and most people, right, have, have sort of been just taking to thinking about her like, uh, a water Alencia. So let's let's go take a look at Alencia stats to see how they compare. I think this should be exactly the same. Uh, preview stats. Ooh, actually, she, wow. 
That's very interesting. Now, I do wonder, it comes down to wondering about her multipliers on whether or not she gets more um, scaling damage off the health because, oh no, actually, I forgot to do this. Okay, there you go. So this is about the same. I think she might be a little higher. I think she is like 960 something uh, 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 attack on the other one. Um, but yeah, they're about the same. Let's go this here again. Yeah, 966, so she's a little higher attack and I think probably just allocated a little different. She's a little faster too. Um, oh, she's a little faster as well. Uh, but yeah, so, so basically uh, what it comes down to is she's very similar in terms of uh, usability. Like in a lot of in a lot of scenarios, she's going to serve a similar purpose to Alencia. She's just going to be hard to kill, uh, especially um, with her S3 where both, so both, S, both S3s do carry... There are some significant differences, but there are very interesting things in, in terms of how well they carry themselves. Uh, so um, they both have health scaling, so you, you can just build a lot of health, you know, 22, 25, up to you know, 25 if you want, if you want to sacrifice other stats. But 22 is usually what most people's Alencia's hang around. Um, so, you know, just build her tanky. She can't get one shot. She can take a few hits and she can hit hard, hard against um, more squishier targets. Um, it's... Let's see. So we have this here. Let's go take a look at the S3. The S3 gives her the crit resistance and the immunity, which is one of those things that um, is pretty good because Alencia does not have this. She gets 30% effect resistance from her S2's passive like buff thing. Oh, that's not a whole lot. And, you know, you know, no one's really building effect resistance on their Alencia's. So the, the next best, best thing is like getting immunity on your um, bruiser tank uh, that she gives herself. So it's pretty good. Um, the fact that she gives herself and everybody crit resistance is kind of similar to how... Valencia gives herself and everyone defense, uh, the defense buff. It's just there to make it harder to get, uh, kill you and your team, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, for those of you who use or fight against, um, what's her name, D Diane, uh, you know how irritating a crit resistance uh, buff can be. Especially like, so if you have 100% crit, right, it basically turns into a 50-50. But the thing is, there's a lot of people who, who build high damage dealers that don't run 100% crit, maybe like 80%. So you're just down to 30% crit at that, in that situation. So it's not even a 50-50 anymore. So maybe one in three, you'll hit a crit. Um, so you can you can see how, how quickly, like, crit resistance makes an enemy's lack of crit more evident, right? I mean, just obviously, right? Um, but yeah, at a basic level, it, it works infinitely better against people who have not built 100% crit. Against people who have crit, it's 50-50. It's, you know, uh, but yeah, so they both increase your uh, HP, or increase, well, your EHP, right, your effective HP. They increase how many hits you can take going forward. Um, defense is always going to be flat. I think defense is averagely better, right? It's always going to be better in every scenario, but crit resistance is always going to be better when you, they manage to pull off the, the crit resist, so they miss the crit because of crit resistance. It's always going to be better, but the thing is, it has higher peaks and lower lows because when they do hit the crit, it did nothing. Um, so there you go. So you can either it's kind of like gambling, right? You have a higher variance in, in what actually ends up happening in the match where defense defense resistant or defense buff might not be as, as useful as the crit buff when it works, but defense buff is consistent is the thing I'm trying to make the point I want to make there. Um, but yeah, so this is AoE just like um, just like what's her name? It says freezes all enemies here, which is kind of funny because you'd, you'd think it would like uh, stun them or something, but that's that's fine. Um, the other thing about this, so she gains immunity and she gives herself and everybody this. Um, the other side of that is Alencia strips, which for those of you who use Alencia or have fought against Alencia, you should know by now um, how useful that strip is. I don't, I don't suggest, and I don't think a lot of people build too much effectiveness. I mean, probably the high end, you're probably hitting somewhere like 50, if that. I mean, a 50 is a pretty good, like, it, it's low, but it's not like, it's not nothing, right? So 50 seems like a really solid number. I mean, maybe people, you know, in top 100 or something have enough stats going around that they can maybe hit 100% effect resistance and then like a bunch of other stats. But at that point, they're fighting against other people who are building like 200%. Um, so it, it's all relative, right? So I think having some effectiveness is good. Uh, Alencia, you're never going to use Alencia to strip people who have high effect resistance. Um, you're just going to use her to strip people who have low effect resistance. So building, stacking more effect resistance on her takes away from more important stats that I think you should be allocating to. Um, but yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you have to consider the resistance versus non-resistance thing with Alencia, period. Uh, because it does pay off when you do strip vital things. Uh, you know, if you've seen RTA, um, DN is kind of like 
reduced in value there because Alencia is there and she can strip off those buffs. So it's like, you know, yeah, it's it's something. To, it's always something to consider. Is is strips are are almost always going to be useful to some degree. They're not like you know the greatest, but they're not always going to be the greatest, but they're always going to be useful. Um, but yeah, like I said, you have to worry about on your end with with because she has that. You have to worry about the crit versus non crit. Where <laughs> thanks to Shu not having that. Uh, you don't have to worry about effectiveness at all on her, which is one of those things that you can um, probably make her a lot stronger. Um, you can, instead of running the effect resist effectiveness, you can start maybe run effective resistance. Um, and that's something Alencia, like like I said, Alencia has, she's good because every stat on her is going to be, is valuable. She wants res effect resistance, she wants effectiveness, she wants crit, she wants speed, she wants health, she wants defense. The only thing she doesn't want is attack, but again, it won't even hurt to put attack on her. Um... But she wants all that. Uh, for, funnily enough, Shu can kind of ignore effectiveness because there's no reason she doesn't have any abilities that use effectiveness. Um, and you and, and you can basically channel that split between effect resistance and effectiveness into her uh, resistance so that she can just you know resist stuff better. Um, but yeah, so like I said, this so with, with the immunity and even with the immunity, it kind of makes you not have to run so much effect resistance. Because uh, you have immunity, but again, it, it's one of those things where it's like there's counterplay, right? Like, how are you gonna get the immunity up if somebody got you the immunity up if somebody hits you with the debuff, uh, the debuff, um, the buff block or whatever, right? Um, so it, it's one of those things that to, that's there to consider. But yeah, so the thing about Shu is you can localize a lot of her stats a little bit better than maybe an Alencia would be able to. Um, so let's take a look at this here. This one gives you fifty percent, thirty percent penetration. Uh, when she's all full focus, she does 50%, and she can do it again. That's very interesting, right? So this this is going to be her main damaging ability, I think. Uh, this is going to be AoE, hit some squishies, but if you really want to like take a squishy out, uh, when the time comes, it's going to be this move. Um, might even do pretty good damage against like more beefy targets, but um, you know, time will tell with uh, with that. Um, what was the other point here? So yeah, you got to get focus on her, so this gives her... Three focus, which is pretty good. Turn one, you got three focus, and then you just need to get two more. Uh, and you get that 50%. Uh, da -da -da, attacks animated spear before increasing caster. Yeah. So you can boost her her uh, CR boost thing here up to 20% on a hit, right? So some people are considering maybe running her fast and fast with a counter build to, to you know boost herself up forward a little more easier uh, and get those stacks a lot better. And if you're going to ask me personally, I think that's probably the way to go. Uh, see if you can hit, you know, 180 speed. Basically, you want to hit similar to Alencia speed, maybe even faster. Um, because Alencia, you kind of want her not as fast as she can be because you want her to strip things. And a lot of people who put buffs up don't make their, their buffer too fast unless there's like a speedy one. So like, you know, you got to consider like Diane's. Diane is, 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 is usually built around 200 speed. So you want to hit like maybe 180, 190 so you can go after her and then strip that stuff. Um, but with Shu, it's not that big a deal, right? So maybe, you know, you can boost her speed up a little more, maybe 200, 220, uh, because you want to give everybody that crit resistance. Um, but if, you know, if you can do that with a speed set, obviously, you know, that's, that's pretty good. But if you do that with a counter set, that's, you know, you're probably at like, I don't know why you're watching this video, if you can hit 220 speed with a really good counter set. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what something you might want to aim for in the late game, um, just to have her turn cycle so much for one and get her, um, her S2 off. Uh, as soon as possible because like i said turn one you got three stacks already because of her s her s3 uh, maybe you hit her once uh she turns cycle you hit her once she counters that's one extra stack and then she goes her turn comes up faster because you hit her and she countered uh that's that's the last stack so now next turn she's got that uh that s2 ready to go um and then after that it resets the cooldown so hopefully you can just like play around with it a little bit and try to get the next the next few stacks so you can hit with the s2 again uh, and then of course the S2 is a soul burn for more damage. So depending on how these multipliers turn out, how well, um, uh, you know, I, I could check them now because she's already out and people have summoned for her and whatnot. Uh, but I just I can't be asked. Um, but yeah, just just to see, um, keep an eye on the on the uh, the local tournaments. Um, Shuffles is a good uh, place to to look at tournaments to see how what the top end is doing and how they're uh, building. Um, you can't see a whole lot, right? But you can kind of see like some decent speed. Um, you can see some decent uh, HP numbers and, and um, just a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I think the bottom line is she looks really good. She looks like, you know, a water Alencia. 
The problem being that one of the things about Alencia, like, is she she's grass. I mean, in addition to like her S one and into S one D break into S two being a very like it's a very potent combo. It's one of those things that it's why um, people have been liking uh, Raz because he has the S two team up uh, defense break into like your highest damage dealer hitting them after they've been defense broken. Uh, Alencia does that on her own. She L oops for herself, and that makes her very strong. The thing is here, uh, show looks a little more like damage over time oriented rather than just hit one person as, as hard as you can. Um, and Alencia's th that way too, right? She's built to be tanky, so she does damage over time, but she has that greater burst damage because of the defense break and the S two into S the S one the S one into S two, basically giving you two S ones in the same turn. Um, even if you don't get the defense break, you're still hitting someone basically twice. Um, but yeah, the, the biggest difference, because, you know, again, because this thing penetrates defense and, and you can just spam it out depending on how much stacks of uh, focus you get, uh, one of the bigger dif differences is going to be, uh, going to come down to, um, the fact that Alentia is green in a very, uh, water heavy meta. Now water has sort of come down slightly thanks to how many good greens we're getting, we, we've had nowadays. So, you know, Basar got buffed. Uh, Charles has always been there, but he was kind of ignorable because SSB just kind of got around him because her S2 didn't trigger anything. You could just S1 and kind of avoid him getting Elburst. I mean, you do sometimes still get Elburst, but uh, uh, he was a little, he's a little easier to manage because of things like that. Um, and then, you know, you've got things like, um, like Alencia now. So those three and a bunch of other units have become, you know, light and dark units have become more uh, dominant in the meta so water isn't as big a threat as it used to be but it's important to realize that it's not as big as a threat because units like Alencia exist so as soon as for some reason they fall off water can start to pick up again a lot more um, the other thing uh, Shu doesn't have a whole lot of like reason to counter like again like I said SSB was is one of the bigger threats was one of the bigger threats I mean she's kind of fallen off a little bit but she's still a huge deal um, she, she's always getting banned out in, in RTA, high level RTA and, and other things like that. Uh, and that's why Alencia is so good. Cause she can fight a lot of these, um, water units. And like, like I said, DN, she's a counter to DN. She's a counter to a lot of uh, AOE water people, um, because she does so much damage against them as, as well as getting her, her buff up and, and all that stuff and stripping on top of all that. Um, but she, there's not a whole lot of people who like, who are you fighting against? With, with Shu, like what, what red threats are you trying to like beat out, right? Um, there's obviously always going to be like, Kron is a big is a big fire threat these days, right? But Kron already crits on water anyway, so I don't know if crit resistance is going to help you there. And two, I mean, Kron is never really that big a deal. You can just bring, again, you can just bring SSB into Kron and that'd be a big deal. Um, yeah, so like, there's not, there's not, it's, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, there's not a whole lot of fire-based threats that are very good unless they're like excessively good, like Kron. Kron is probably one of the better fire units, and even he's middling in terms of unit viability. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, for those of you who watch uh, Shuffles' videos, there's not a whole lot of units up at the top end of the tier list for the fire, and, and I usually kind of agree with that. There's a few placings that I don't agree with, but um, it's a pretty good example of, of seeing that because, you know, for one, Shuffles is pretty experienced in terms of hanging out at the top end, um, and he hosts tournaments all the time, so he, he has, like, raw data that he can, like, confirm all this stuff, all his tier list and stuff with that. So, uh, if you, again, if you want to uh, see how the tier lists are and what kind of threats are out there, you I would defer you to him in that scenario. Uh, but what it comes down to is that there's not a whole lot of fire going on that you'd, like, you really need a, a shoe to deal with. And even one of the few fires that looks like, I mean, she looks like she's kind of doing something, but you still don't see her that often is, is, um, is Holiday Euphine, right? She doesn't care about critting anyway, right, for one, because she, uh, she burns and you just want to get those burn stacks on. So you don't build a lot of, you don't build a lot of crit chance on her. Granted, she has the, the immunity, but it's only for herself, which means that you can just burn everybody else around her and deal with her as she comes. Um, but yeah, so it's one of those things where it's like you need to consider your box your heroes and look at like what do you need to counter how many fire units are you running into that are so problematic you have to counter them with a water unit um in addition to like it's it's good to realize that she is 
just good overall and not just like oh she's a water unit she's she's we have to think about what fire threats now she's pretty good she could probably fight against other water units uh she could probably fight against other fire other grass units to some degree uh though i think she might still um have a hard time against like charles alencia could probably you know hurt her pretty well um well alencia yeah alencia could probably hurt her pretty well just because you can strip that stuff but again it comes down to like how much effective resistance are you running on her um, the the fact that you can maybe run more effect resistance on Shu than you can effectiveness or even effect resistance on your Alencia might give her that advantage over Alencia. Um, but again, it's always it always comes down to like time and builds. So me personally, uh, I'm I'm feeling like I should just summon for her uh, because she does seem like another Alencia and RTA right now is full of bruisers. It's full of bruisers and people trying to cleave, right? And I don't really have the speed gear to cleave, to try to cleave, so I have to run a lot of bruisers. Um, so that's that's kind of my reasoning for kind of being lukewarm and not just no right away. Um, but yeah, so it, it depends, right? So we'll see what comes out uh, in the coming weeks. Um, see if I need something like she she provides. Unfortunately, I already have DN, so I don't need crit resistance. Uh, I don't really need this. Or this because Alencia can do uh, both of these things pretty easily uh, with her S1. Like I said, S1, Aliops, and S2. Um, but yeah, so you know, consider your box. Like I said, I might just pull her at some point. To, like if depending on what comes next, I might just pull her just for the sake of like having her there because it's always when it comes to games like this, it's like it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, right? And that's just generally a good rule for a lot of things, um, depending on where your situation, where your situation is. Uh, so that's kind of my thoughts. It's like, if I pull her, it's gonna be it's gonna be basically just to have her there for the day that like something comes out or or, or we we start looking at a meta shift and it's like okay now she's useful. Um, whereas like if if we're talking about like when Alencia came out, it was like you really need to pick this unit up. I mean a lot of people were kind of butthurt over the the nerf that she got, um, but she was still very good and and I, re I do really feel sad for anybody who just like disregarded her because of that because when she came out like SSB was a huge threat. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. SSB was like a massive threat at the time. And there was a lot of water units like, you know, Dizzy and all these other people. Now, of course, Alencia doesn't do the best against Dizzy because she has debuffs. But like, you know, if you run a cleanser and that's, that's fine. It's not the big deal. Uh, but there's a lot of water units that you got to watch out for at the time. And, and there was a lot of buffs that were going around uh, despite the fact that Basar was so heavily inclined in the meta. Um, but it just took time, right? So not only was she decently good at the time, uh, it took time. It took more time for us to realize that how good her multipliers were and how much damage she actually put out. And that's kind of my thing with Shu is that like right now she doesn't look as strong as Alencia in terms of like what kind of damage she could do, but she could very well over the course of time end up being someone who competes with her damage. Um, and the fact that she's only water might not um, might not be in uh, in in her her not, might not count against her the way I'm thinking now. Like right now, the fact that she's water isn't as big a deal. To me um but it really just comes down to like a lot of the stuff because if she if she if you can make her tanky enough to not have to worry about like water threats like even like you take alencia you can take alencia into a k-ron and not be too worried about it like i sometimes i have a lot more confidence a lot of the times taking alencia's into k-rons than sometimes you know some of my water units right um depending you know obviously you need the right kind of like healing and backup and all that kind of stuff but that's what i'm saying it's like Shu might be good enough to overcome that perceived negative of only being water the same way Alencia might overcome that. But the thing with Alencia is she's willing to be forgived more and given more time to get over that uh, because she was green to begin with, which is a very good color to be in a water heavy game like this. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, it's also unfortunate that she doesn't have a cleanse here. Yeah, she gives herself immunity. She doesn't have a cleanse here. Um, but if you make her fast enough, you could probably just take her into teams that, you know, you know she'll outspeed and then give herself and uh, the buffs right away. Um, but, you know, that's about all there is to it. Even if you outspeed, I mean, I guess the thing is you're never going to take her into a um, Basar, right? I mean, you know, no one's saying to do that. Um, but against certain teams, it could be pretty useful to be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on, on, on Shu. Like I said, I'll summon on her depending on what, what comes next. Um, but if I do summon on her, and if you do summon on her, I think it's going to be more for, like, posterity's sake, right? For for the future, like, just to have her there for when whatever whatever we learn about her makes her worthwhile. Um, 
as opposed to right now. Because even right now, like I'm out of molas. Like she's not going to be good unless she's plus fifteen, like Alencia. Like Alencia is a very good investment for plus fifteening, just because she's already proven herself to be solid and and and, and all that stuff. Um, she's not going to be good until people start plus fifteening her, and that's going to be a while because we're all kind of mola starved. Uh, I hear Astronox has a video today. I'm gonna probably gonna, you know, Astronox has a video today for with about her. Uh, you might want to check that out. She, he's using her in Guild War. It says plus 15 mola, so we can see what kind of damage she's putting out. And um, if you're on this channel, probably you're around his level of competitiveness, the same way I, I feel I am, uh, to some degree. I mean, I think he's a little better than me, but um, you know, I've never actually fought him. So um, yeah, like if you're around these levels, he, uh, that showcase might be a good indicator of what kind of numbers you can see. You can see her putting up uh, what kind of people she can fight against uh, in, in that bracket. Um, but yeah, so. Just another thing, she's got uh, crit chance here, which is good because it's another stat that you don't have to focus on so much. So she gets 16, oop, uh-oh. Uh, she gets 16 from there, and she's got 15 base, right? Yeah, 15 base. So she's already at 30 something. Um, with a crit set, if you wanna run a crit set, um, which you might just run an immunity set, right? Immunity and then give herself two, two, two turns of immunity the, as soon as she goes, so it's already three turns of immunity. Um, but yeah, like, the fact that she has so much, like, like attached to her means you can kind of, like, just build her a little easier than Alencia. Um, but the question is, will she get you as much as Alencia gets you? Um, and that's, that's another question entirely. Uh, and she gives you health, which is just a... It's, it stacks, right? It doesn't fulfill a thing. The thing with crit chance, why it's so good, is because crit chance has a cap. Once you reach 100% crit chance, like, you're there. So every little bit of crit chance you get is less crit chance you have to worry about. Whereas health is, like, there's no cap. Um, I mean, there's targets you want to hit sometimes, but there's no real cap. So, you know, if you start stacking on health, it's just, like, more health rather than, oh, look, we're reaching the end point, which is what crit helps you do, which is why it's so valuable as a, uh, as a uh, imprint or whatever. Yeah, as an imprint concentration. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's that for 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 this for this video, I guess. Is uh, oh, hold on, that's it. That's that for that vi for this video, I guess. Um, you know, take take from this what you will. Again, watch watch as many videos as you can on Shu while she's here, uh, and then make a decision. Um, as you can see, my resources are not as um, as high as they once used to be. So I've got to really consider whether or not I want her. The artifact looks kind of interesting. If I can maybe look at it here. Uh, okay. This artifact looks kind of interesting. Um, I think you get, so you get 20% effect resistance, which is pretty good. Um, and then you get, I think 16% at max combat readiness whenever you hit with a non-crit, uh, which is decent, but I, I do still think you're probably just gonna wanna run Draco Plate on her, um, ultimately. Uh, but the other thing I wanna point out here is regarding this um, this artifact, I don't have ML Ken, and ML Ken is for one. He's kind of fallen off the meta. Like he's just kind of there. He 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 can solo team sometimes, but that ends up that ends up just being a meme a lot of the time. Um, but I do wonder if this is good on him, right? Because for one, ML Kens can always use more effect resistance. For two, if you crit a Ken, he's gonna counter you and just hit you really hard. But if you don't crit a Ken. <laughs> then you get a benefit from this, right? He gets up, he gets moved up 16% forward. Um, so it's just something to consider. Um, do I think it's gonna be like best in class for Ken? No, Sigurd Scythe is still uh, very valuable. Uh, it's kind of hard to give that up, but um, you know, this snow crystal looks kind of interesting. It looks like it could, you know, Ken's can kind of be finally be speedy. Uh, if, you're, if you're trying to like get around a Ken by just not critting him, it's gonna be hard because he's still gonna be taking, you know, faster turns thanks to this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's hard to give up the, uh, the 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 scythe, the sacred scythe because of how much. And for one, it gives you like twenty five percent extra damage without even boosting it at all, without even giving it uh, uh, relics or anything or um, charms or anything. Uh, but then you get like up to what fifty fifty percent uh, healing back. Um, so yeah, if you have like a decent life steal set on him, I'm not sure what I think a lot of people run uh, crit set on him. Which I think is, again, it's probably the way to go. Crit set with the Sigurd Scythe is going to be your, like, best bet. Um, but even with that, like, a lot of Kens are falling off just because he's not the, he's not that good anymore. Uh, for, I mean, for one, especially now that we have uh, Corvus running around, uh, Dark Corvus is running around. Uh, but like I said, just something to consider. Um, could seem kind of interesting, like a speedier uh, Ken forcing you to brawl with him. Uh, and either way, whether you crit him or not, he uh, 
you get something out of it. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, the artifact, not such a big deal, but missing out on Shu could be as big as missing out on Alencia. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I might make a video summoning for her all the way later. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, tomorrow we're getting news of, of ML Crow, and then probably some point later this week we're going to get news uh, about what's to come after her. So just keep your eyes open, uh, keep your ears open, you know, always, always better to exercise, uh, what's the word? You know, caution and uh, patience is, is there. We go. It's, it's just be patient is always the best way to do these sorts of things. Um, but yeah, so that's it for today. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy these kind of like these style of videos a little more. Um, talking about units as they come out. Uh, Fire Emblem. I want to do that for Fire Emblem as well. Mainly more for Fire Emblem, just because again here it's like it's hard to talk about units here because you have to talk about the unit and then you have to be like, well, if you have the gear, and a lot of times people don't really we don't have, have the gear. Uh, we don't have the molas. We don't have like anything to build them. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, you know, if, you, if you're going to summon on her, good luck. Uh, hopefully, uh, it all goes well and uh, it's, it turns out to be a good investment for you. Um, but yeah, so that's it for today.